Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, as I began to think about these services that we were going to have, I began to think about the cross. I began to ask the Lord to share something with me that I could share with you pertaining to the cross. The cross, as we spell it, and I know that I, I don't want to think that you cannot spell the cross, but let me spell it for you so that it will help me, okay? C-R-O-S-S. -S. I've been asking all week for the Lord to give me something that I could use the letters in the word cross, and it came like this at about 1 o'clock this morning. C is for Christ. R is for redeemed. O is for our S is for sinful, and S is for souls. So when you think about what Christ did on the cross was Christ redeemed our sinful souls. Can somebody say amen? For the scripture reading today, Matthew 9th chapter, verses 12 and 13, if you're following along with me in your Bible. But when Jesus heard that he said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice, for I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. The cross is my statue of liberty. The cross is what... And we know that the cross did not do it. But the man, Jesus, that came and hung on the cross of Calvary, he is the one that brought us the liberty. But as we look at the empty cross, and I want to remind you the cross is empty today. Jesus is no longer on the cross. Jesus no longer is in the tomb. Jesus today is at the right hand of the Father, awaiting the Father to give him permission to come back and claim that which belongs to him is redeemed. So the cross is my statue of liberty. When I see the cross, I realize that God has set me free. Christ died on the cross for our redemption. That was his part. May I share with you, he has done all he's going to do and can do to provide redemption for us. Our part is repentance, as you see in verse 13, the latter part there, but sinners to repentance. It is up to us to repent of our past, of our present, and of our future. None are without fault, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What does repentance mean? It means the turning from sin and the turning to Christ. In humility, the humility of repentance, we come into the presence of God. There's only one way to come into the presence of God. Only one way to come to know God, and that is to come into his presence. We read in the scriptures where Adam and Eve, when they decided not to listen to the demands and the concerns of God, they turned from his presence and they were rejected from his presence. Because of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, he made it possible for us to come again into the presence of an almighty God. So there's only one way to know God, and that is get in his presence. The presence of God in your life is the difference between day and night, between life and death. Without being in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no life, but in him we have life, and that life more abundantly. Pastors, if you're here today and you need a three-point outline, here is one for you. God provides through his Son on the cross of Calvary. First of all, in his promise, he has given us his presence, number one. Number two, his protection. Number three, his provisions. So in the presence of Jesus Christ, we have his promises of his divine presence. Not just a partial knowledge, 
but a life-experiencing knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, getting to know him personally. Involved in that, he then gives us the protection that we need. Protection from what? Protection from that one that desires to sift us as wheat, the one that comes with temptation, the one that comes. And some folks seem to think once they are saved, they don't have to worry about the devil. Well, I have to be concerned with him day by day. That's why I need the presence of the Lord, because in the presence of the light, there's an absence of darkness, and the devil brings darkness. So as we are walking in his presence, you know, when I felt the safest growing up, is when I was with my father or with my family or with my coach, whoever was in charge, and I knew they were responsible for me, I felt safe with them. There were plenty of times when mom would take us six children and dad would be working and mom would be with us and she'd sense danger. She'd say, now you stay with me, stay close. I can't help you if you stray off because I've got all these other children. So you must stay safe. Church, can I tell you today, there's safety when you stay in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's safety when we realize that in his, uh, and when his presence, he will promise us the good things of life. He will not let us down. So the promise of his presence and, oh, there's safety in his presence. There is protection in his promise and his presence. You see, we need his protection. Many times God protects us and we're not even aware of it. How many times have you been driving down the road and you realize maybe you nodded off and all of a sudden you came to, something woke you up. We say, oh, something woke me up. Well, guess what that something or who that something was? It was not something, it was someone, it was somebody in the person of Jesus Christ nudging us by his Holy Spirit to wake up because impending danger was heading our way. So he gives us in his presence a promise also of his protection. And then, of course, his provision. I acknowledge day by day that God is the one that provides all I need. He's all I need. It doesn't matter physical. It doesn't matter spiritual, financial, as Dr. Nichols mentioned earlier, how God will provide through the ministerial association. It's amazing how we take for granted the provision that God provides us with. And I don't know about you this morning, but I know that I need the Lord Jesus Christ. I need his presence I need his protection. I need his provision. I am not a self-made man. What I am, God made me. I'm not like Popeye the sailor when he said, what I am, that's all that I am, Popeye the sailor. I am more than that, you see, because there's part of God in me. I was created in his image and his likeness. So I'm not just a human. The song that says I'm just a human or I'm only a human or I'm only a man. I'm not just a human today, Dr. Nichols. There's a part of God in me. I'm born again. Amen. Why? Because Jesus went to the cross of Calvary and through humility he brought me to my knees. And at that time and that day I found Jesus Christ in the full pardon of sin. Therefore I was able to have the light of Jesus Christ in my life. Let me talk about the definition of presence. The definition of presence is to turn the face, to fill up, to pervade. It also means to be under the eyes of or in the face of someone. The idea of God's presence has to do with God's face being turned towards someone in acceptance and favor. Furthermore, God's presence means to be sufficient to be able to sustain and support that which God energizes. When God is present, he sustains, he supports, and he energizes. Another three-point outline. In his presence, he sustains, he supports, and he energizes. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God not only sustains me and supports me, but he energizes me. Amen. Because I know that I would not be standing here today if it was not for God and his provision. For you see, a number about 30 some odd years ago, the doctors told me by the time I was 50, I'd be in a wheelchair. And I know some of you think, well, you've not reached 50 yet. Thank you. You're kind. But yet... Come, this coming October the 16th, I will be 57 years of age and a long ways from the wheelchair. So you see, I know that God had provided and he has protected and I know he has sustained me through all the sickness and the illness. You don't have time today for me to tell you what all God has brought me through, but God has energized me 
through his precious word. Folks, today, if you go without his word, you will become weak. One W-E-E-K without God's word will make you W-E-A-K weak. Can somebody say amen? You see, every time that God manifested his presence in the Bible, two things were present. First of all, his protection and his provision. If you want his presence, it's very simple. His protection and his provisions are always available in his presence. So we must stay in the presence of God. Amen. Even we ministers, when we come to the pulpit, we need to be in his presence. But can I tell you, it must start before then. We must be in his presence in the office, out on the visitation field. Wherever we're at, we must have the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe that, say amen. If you don't, say oh me. You see, when danger is around, we hear God saying, stay close. Matter of fact, every time that Jesus came in the midst of the disciples or his people, what did he say? Be not afraid. Why? He said, because I'm here. I'm here. That's all that matters. You see, when we know that he's here, how many can say that he's here today and you know that he's here? How do you know he's here? First of all, because his word said he'd never leave us or forsake us. He'd always be with us to the very end. Amen? So we know he's here there, not only by the word, but also by my feelings. And I had to go to the word first. Feelings will deceive you. But when you stay in the Word, the Word will keep those feelings in line. The Word is what brings conviction to our heart when we're lingering in the realm of temptation. So you see, when God sustains us in His presence, when He brings us to that place to where that He energizes us, it lets us know that we're not walking in our own strength and our own power, but we're walking in the presence of the Most Holy Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful today that I know that God's protection is available. Without his presence, there's nothing can meet the needs of man's spirit in the Bible. You see, there are some folks, or many folks out there today that don't realize that they are impending danger. We're in the last days, the last hours. I believe that. You may not believe that, but I read my Bible, and I understand that according to the statistics and all that's taking place, that Jesus could return just any day now. And so therefore, if I'm in his presence, it'll not catch me off guard. He will let me know that he's coming. I know the scripture says no one knows the day or the hour the Son of Man cometh. But I believe that if we know the seasons, and I believe he gives that hint when he says you can look at the skies and you can tell what kind of weather you're going to have. But he says you really don't understand the season here. But I believe that when we're in his presence, he will manifest through his spirit and let us know that his return is imminent. No, he's not going to tell us the day or the hour or the year for the simple fact is many of us are so humble that we would say, well, I'm going to have that good time, that one last fling just before that happens. But folks, we don't know the exact day or hour. It's time that we come to that place to where that we stay in his presence 24-7. For you see, in his presence, God brings his provisions for man's needs. And he always, tied to his presence, God is always there. And he's all I need. Jesus is all I need. It doesn't matter again, as I stated earlier, whether it's spiritual, physical, or social. God continually meets the needs of man's mind, will, and emotions. And for those people that do not allow Jesus Christ's presence into their midst, they miss that. That's why they have nervous conditions. That's why that their emotions are so messed up. That's why they have all kind of questions about things. Uh, oh, but what will God do when we bring all of this to him? We see that he brings the acceptance and he forgives us. He will affirm us and he will comfort us. Can I say those again? Uh, he will accept us. First of all, he will love us. And he always has loved us from the very beginning. How many knows that? Say amen. He's always loved us, but he will accept us for what we are. He is the one that makes the changes. Certainly repentance comes from us. 
but provision comes from him. So when those two, and we humble ourselves and pray and seek his face, we know that our land is going to be healed. If our land can be healed, then we know that our relationship can be healed. And when we have a right relationship with him, we'll have the right relationship with our companion, with our children, with our fellow man, with the business folks, even with the road hog out there. I thought that would go over good, but it hit like a lead balloon, didn't it? <laughs> Apparently, we don't have any road hogs in Gonzales. Everybody drives real careful, and that's why there's so many wrecks. <laughs> God will meet our needs. Psalms 60th Division, verse 81 says, Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. In the Bible, enemy means adversary. Peter tells us that our adversary, Satan, goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, I'm going to tell you something today. Satan cannot devour. You know why? Jesus pulled all of his teeth on the cross of Calvary. He may lick you to make you think you're going to get hurt, but you know the way that Satan operates? Through fear. He causes us to do things and the psychics do the same thing, and if you have been one of those that have been calling the psychics, shame on you. That went over like a lead balloon as well. I guess I'm hitting some, some sore spots. I'm frying somebody's bacon. I just smell it burning. Very often we are prone to make decisions because we are under attack. That is no time to make decisions when you're under attack. When you're under attack, you just simply hold your ground. You hold on and call for reinforcements like Peter did when he was sinking. Peter didn't try to evaluate. Peter didn't try to say, well, I'm going to run as fast as I can. Peter did the smart thing like all of us need to do. What did he say? Jesus, save me. And guess what happened? Jesus came walking on the water and reached out to him and took him by the hand. Now, I don't know what your theology tells you, how they got back to the ship or the boat, but I got a feeling that Jesus took him by the hand and they walked hand in hand on the water back to the ship. Amen? So today, there's power in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cross is Christ redeeming our sinful souls. That's what happened on the cross for you and I. Today, if you're here and you're hurting and you have needs, all you've got to do is call out to the, the Christ that hung on the cross of Calvary. Humble yourselves today. You may, you may during this Lenten season, there are a number of things that you could give up, probably a number of things that we all need to give up, not just during Lenten, but all through the year that will help us to be more in tune with God, more where God can use and bless us. So today, in the promise of the empty cross, of the man that hung on the empty cross, we have his presence his protection, and his provision. Would you stand with us today? May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. May you have received the word of God today as the Lord has presented it to you. God bless you. Just meditate for a few moments on these words as their company is play for us. As we think about the presence of our Lord, we think about his protection, his provision that Brother Fowler has spoken to us about. What is it that the Lord needs to say to you today? Would you just picture the cross right now and see what he wants to say to you?